You all love conspiracy theories that turn your view of a movie upside down or give you thoughts on upcoming plot twists. There was a theory that was so convincing that it could even answer the questions left in the wake of The Force Awakens. So I've decided to dismantle that premise and prove to you that Mace Windu is snook. To fully embrace this idea, let's start by remembering who Mace Windu is. Mace Windu, a member of the Korun race, head of the Jedi High Council, a fine warrior and teacher of young students. He possessed an appealing magnetism and always exuded calmness and authority. Also, just as importantly, he created the combat technique of Vapad, a ruthless lightsaber attack, and was a true connoisseur of the balance of strength and poise. In the third episode of Revenge of the Sith, while attempting to kill the Dark Lord Sirius, Anakin Skywalker cut off his right hand, thus depriving Mace of his weapon, which Sirius took advantage of and struck him with a lightning bolt of force that pushed him out an open window to his death. However, did such a powerful Jedi, who had been through countless battles, really die? Let's break down the fight scene between Mace Windu and Palpatine. To begin with, Anakin chops off Mace's arm, and you all know that chopping off limbs in Star Wars has never been a fatal injury. Dozens of Jedi have lost their arms and survived. Second, he was struck by Palpatine's Force Lightning, which definitely disfigured him and definitely didn't kill him. And it's also worth considering the sound of Mace flying out the window, as if he tensed up and made a leap of power. We can definitely say that he survived the lightning strike, since the Force Lightning never killed anyone, even in previous Star Wars installments. Palpatine struck Luke and Yoda with such lightning and didn't kill either of them. Count Dooku struck Anakin with Force Lightning. And he didn't die either. Even when Palpatine's lightning at full power reflected back at him, it didn't kill him either. Windu flew out of a window and fell from a great height. But a Jedi can fall from a great height and remain perfectly fine. It's a fact that no Jedi, in any part of Star Wars, has ever died from a fall. Jedi have also fallen from greater heights than Windu fell. Even Anakin flew hundreds of feet in the same city of Coruscant and landed safely on a passing car. Of course, and Mace, being a Jedi Master, would have been able to land perfectly safely. You might be thinking that Mace Windu looks absolutely nothing like Snoke. He's old, has ghostly white skin, and a face disfigured by scars. In fact, that's what Mace would look like after everything that's happened to him. First, Palpatine's Force Lightning struck him with the most powerful Force Lightning possible. The same lightning was reflected by Windu into the same Palpatine's face. Palpatine's skin went from normal to ghostly white, also completely disfigured with scars beyond recognition. And she did the same thing to Mace's face, disfigured with scars, changed the colour to a pale, ghostly white. Snoke looks pretty old. He says he's seen the rise of the Empire and its fall. I watched the Empire rise and then fall. So he was still living in the prequels, which also connects him to Mace Windu. Mace was alive in the prequels, and watched the Empire blossom and fall, and by this time must be a frail old man. Even when he lost his arm, he could definitely have had a mechanical arm like some of the Jedi who lost their arms. And the scar on his head could have come from a fall on Coruscant. It's also worth noting that one of the similarities to Snoke is also his bald head. But what drives him? What could have made him turn to the dark side? Before we look at his motives, it should be noted that he is not as good and innocent a character as one might think. Fact is, Mace Windu uses the dark side of the Force far more than any other Jedi. Note that he carries a purple Jedi blade. Aside from the cool color, this shows that he balances the dark and light side of the Force, as mixing blue and red gives purple. Mace Windu is the only Jedi to use the Varpad style he created, which allowed him to harness and channel his inner darkness in a duel. This means that when he fights, he uses the dark side of the Force, but he controls it and balances it with his emotions. Varpad is an aggressive and powerful style, but risky. Diving into Varpad opens a gateway behind which darkness hides. To use Varpad, a Jedi must savor the battle, he must have chills running down his spine with excitement. Victory Ecstasy Varpad is the road that leads to the Twilight Zone on the border of the dark side. This can be seen when he fights. He blows Jango Fett's head off and is about to kill Palpatine, when even Anakin says that such murder without judgment is not in keeping with the path of the Jedi. Snoke, on the other hand, is obsessed with balancing the dark and light sides of the Force. He even started training Ben Solo, 
mostly because he has both the dark and light sides of the Force in him. So why did Mace Windu turn to the dark side? As we know, he was skillfully balancing between the dark and light sides. It takes a pretty big push to shift him to one side or the other. Anakin's betrayal could have been that push. He could also have started taking revenge on the Skywalkers because Anakin betrayed him, cut off his arm, and allowed Palpatine to disfigure his face and kill him. This could be one of the main reasons why he wants to find Luke to interrupt the Skywalker bloodline. He also wants revenge on Palpatine's kind, since Emperor Palpatine almost killed him. And if the theory that Rey is Emperor Palpatine's granddaughter is true, he wants to kill her as well. She is the last of the Palpatine family, which is why he was so interested in finding her. There's also an amazing fan theory that Mace Windu thinks he is the Chosen One, and not Anakin Skywalker. It explains that he was against Anakin's training, always disliked him, and tried to stop Anakin from getting the title of Jedi Master at the Jedi Council. The prophecy was for the Chosen One to bring harmony to the Force, and Mace Windu studied the balance of the Force perfectly, with the help of Varpad, wore a purple sword symbolizing the balance of the Force, and was going to kill Palpatine, the last of the Sith. So, he can still consider himself the Chosen One, and he needs to destroy the remaining Skywalkers to prove to himself that he is the Chosen One, and not any of them. Even Han Solo knows that Snoke is planning to kill Kylo Ren, who is also a Skywalker. Like other Star Wars characters, the MB has a crowning lightsaber strike that basically only he uses. It's a move that makes him unique, a move we see in every fight he has. It's a backward swinging, slashing blow. He even chops off Jango Fett's head with it, and uses it many times in his fight with Palpatine. Actually, we know of another ST character who uses this punch, Kylo Ren. We see him use the sprawling, backward swinging, slashing punch numerous times in The Force Awakens. In fact, he uses it at least three times in his fight with Rey. So if Mace Windu is Snoke, he taught Kylo Ren this deadly move while training on the dark side. Well, perhaps one of the most interesting points of this theory is that Finn may be Mace Windu's son. Before we get into how and why, it should be said that Finn is unequivocally Force-sensitive. When Snoke asked Kylo Ren in Awakening, Did you feel it? He was referring to the Force Awakening in Finn, not Rey, especially in the episode where Finn decided to go to the light side during the battle on Jakku. We know this because their dialogue was even before Rey showed any powers. The first time she showed the Force was in the castle when Rey accidentally used her Force vision, well after Kyle and Snoke's conversation. If Finn is Force-sensitive, and his parents must also be Force-sensitive, and if Mace Windu is still alive, and if he is Snoke, it's worth assuming that Finn is his son. Theoretically, it's possible Snoke was disappointed that Finn didn't show proper Force potential as a child and ended up disowning Finn in search of a child with potential like Ben Solo. But he didn't abandon Finn, hoping to use him somehow in the future. Snoke decided to make him an Imperial Stormtrooper in order to keep an eye on him and make sure he was loyal to the First Order. And no one looks out for him better than Kylo Ren. Which explains why Finn's first assignment was the daunting mission to follow Kylo Ren to Jakku so the mission with Kylo Ren looks pretty suspicious. It also explains why Kylo Ren looked at him suspiciously before boarding the ship, when Finn decided not to serve the First Order by standing on the battlefield on Jakku. Kylo Ren noticed the power awakened in him at that moment. This also explains why later, when Kylo Ren was told that an Imperial Stormtrooper had helped Poe Dameron escape, Kylo Ren knew for sure that this Stormtrooper was Finn. Kylo Ren knew that Finn was Force-sensitive, and that he was Snoke's son, and he was fine with him making his own decisions and resisting his orders. Kylo Ren also completely lost control of himself when he learned that Finn had helped Rey escape with Jakku, and realized that Finn had betrayed not only the dark side, but Snoke as well. And he, Kylo Ren, was supposed to be looking out for him. It's also noticeable that the movie really emphasizes Finn's betrayal. For example, when the Imperial Stormtrooper calls him a traitor, and then tries to kill him. This gives his betrayal even more weight than it may seem. And finally, when Kylo Ren and Finn meet at the end of The Force Awakens, Kylo Ren is just furious at Finn's betrayal, and it looks like he's taking it personally. You can see it in his voice when he yells, Predator! But when Kylo Ren fights him, he's just toying with him instead of just killing him. When Finn finally gets a hold of Kylo Ren, he just punches him with his fist, 
injuring him in the back instead of killing him easily. Kylo Ren killed his own father, chopped an old man in half at the beginning of the movie, and the prop for his mask is a pile of ashes from the corpses of the people he killed. And he decides to let Finn live because Finn is still very useful to Snoke and the dark side. Putting all the thoughts and facts together, we can come to the conclusion that Mace Windu is alive, and the broken balance of his power has bent him into darkness, making him the supreme leader of Snoke. What do you think? Is this true? Or is it just another fan's search for deeper meaning? Leave your answers in the comments below this video, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new crazy theories.